And what are some what are some more prospecting techniques that you use in terms of actually getting your foot in the door? Because it's not the easiest thing to do. Information, a little bit of free consulting. There's nothing wrong with having a chat with someone you've met, and if you build rapport with them, you actually get on with them. Offer to send them something via email. Follow up on an offhand comment. Remember that it was their daughter's fourth birthday and that you talked about the latest Star Wars Lego game for PlayStation and that you can send them a link to the cheat notes on a PlayStation forum or something. That's the way to start building relationships. Or it's, it's yep. what I have found useful. Yep. Um, in terms of um, building personal relationships, that's really important. But I think as a... if Let's say you're a one-man band like me or you're a very small business. If you're trying to get into bigger businesses, um, you need to look bigger than you are. And, and somebody... I think it might have been Joe actually tonight said to me, winning words, I think I've met you before. I think I've met someone from your business before. And that happens to me quite a lot okay. because um, I speak and I write. I've published quite a number of articles and the name starts getting out there. So, you know, when you are a small business, that's a very, very cheap, very effective way of building your profile and your credibility. So, if you have an opportunity to do that, I have a newsletter. It's a free newsletter. It goes out once a month. Anybody can join up. Um, there's probably about, I think there's five or six hundred on that database yep. now. So, in terms of the sales cycle, you need to recognise sometimes when it's a really long sales cycle. And like Bridget, I've, I've had one client who I had a meeting with, I think it was two and a half years ago or two years ago or something like that, and they actually became a client this year. Because it was only then that they had a pitch that they considered big enough and important enough for me to come in and and um, and work with them on. So think about the sales cycle in your business. Think about, you know, where do you need to be so that in my case, sometimes it's a very quick decision. And so I need to be known as the go-to person for bids, pitches and sales proposals. So that's what I position myself as. And when you're doing that, think about the other people who are talking to your customers. Very successful strategic alliance for me has been with Tenderlink. Now, Tenderlink advertised tenders. I help people write tenders. So they actually have just a little <laughs> link on the bottom of their emails yep. that says, you know, if you want tender writing assistance, call Robin. And I'm the only person in Australia that, um, that they refer business to. So it so is really about positioning yourself apart from everybody else in what you do. Who else talks to That's your customers? Tenderlink talks to my to. customers. Yeah, yep. people people who also need to write tenders. Yep. Um, you know, if you're in a business like Bridget's, who else talks to big companies who, who need communications and marketing advice? Well, graphic design firms do, PR firms do. Um, think about who else influences your customers. Yep. And Bridget, I want to ask your opinion in terms of speeding up the sales cycle. Have you got some techniques that you can use? Because sometimes larger companies, you're leaving voicemail messages, you're not getting a response. It's not that they're not interested. They're no. working 60 hours a week. It could also be that something else has happened in the business that puts a project on hold. Yep. It could be that they've got sick. It could be that the other department they're working with hasn't got their act together. There's lots of reasons why you can actually stop leaving voicemail three times a day after you've been doing it every day for a week. I can't really speed up the process because the need for a name or the need for a tagline can... It comes about when it comes about. Um, even when it comes to projects that have been in planning for a while, um, which was a, a, a project for a superannuation brand, we knew that there were going to be things that drove that around their, their timing that were legal requirements. But in the end, it still took the time that it took. Yep. Uh, and I'd like to think that there are ways to speed it up. But you can't really you know, discount or offer special things. Um, yep. It depends on whether it's professional services or something more transactional. And Robin's got one thing you can do. <laughs> While you've been talking about this, in terms of proposal writing, um, I guess, and in terms of when you're actually building the value in your service offering and what you do, one thing that can work quite effectively is quantifying lost opportunity or quantifying the cost of failing to act. So if, for example, you know, you're talking to a company and you're providing recruitment services and you want to get them to change, um, you know, to, to look at the way that they're hiring people, you could say, well, you know, your turnover is X percent at the moment and if it stays at this, you know, it's going to cost you $20,000 for each new hire over a period of time. So, you know, if I can get that down to half for you, it's going to save you that amount of money. Yep. Big corporations and big companies don't really 
care what you do. They only care about the results. So everything that you talk about has to be about the problem you solve or the results that you create. And more people, I'd say 80% of people buy because they're scared of not buying as opposed to wanting to realise a benefit. One thing I wanted to mention, which is a terrific book that I've recommended Fantastic. to Ben before, um, American lady by the name of Jill Conrath. It's a book called Selling to Big Companies. And that is the name of her website and her blog. You can buy that book through there. Um, I have a background in big companies, so therefore I understand how big companies work. But things change all the time. And if you don't, you're a small business looking to sell to a big business, you really are going to struggle unless you can understand some of the mentality of the type of people that you deal with and the fact that you're always going to get voicemail. Um, you're taught in selling courses that it's a numbers game. It is not a numbers game with big corporations, with big companies. You need to identify a manageable number of targets, maybe six to ten, yep. and go after those. Only talk to people who can help you get into those companies. It's no good saying, I'm going to make 50 calls today and it's going to, that, might, that might work well if you're selling there, something to no small business. research. But it shows the person hasn't done the research and taken that's the right. time on that company. That's right. Do we have any... One last question. Yep. Um, a lot of big corporations buy from big corporations. In the safety business that I'm in, um, they buy from the companies that can provide everything. And having been in corporate life myself, we also dealt with the people that could supply the most. How do you break, it, break down the product range that somebody sells them when you only sell as a small business owner a portion of that? How do you break down that complete buying chain and they're saying, which I used to sell, you know, in the corporate world, buy it from them out distributed because you can buy not only outright from them, you can buy everything else. Now I'm in the reverse situation where I've got the last product and I'm trying to break into their supply chain. Simple answer to that question, and that answer is that you become a member of a consortium who bids for those projects. You become a supplier to the company that can supply the end-to-end solution, for lack of a better term, because I hate that word, um, that you can pr supply the end-to-end product or service or whatever it is that they want. That's the way. I mean, and if you're a small business, sometimes your customer may actually be the people ha who can do all of that. Bridget's um, customers sometimes are the design agencies who actually contract her services out to the big corporations who are their customers. So you've got to think laterally about that. Don't go bashing your head against a brick wall because you're only one person. Um, that's, that's probably the best advice I could give yep. on that point. Yeah, comment? I wholeheartedly agree with Robin and the only other way around it is to be looking for the weakness in that procurement chain. So some companies buy my services because I do a better job at what I do and they don't buy all of my services, they might just buy one or another because I do a better job at that than the rest of the business that they buy from. So if you can do one thing better and as long as you make it easy for them to buy from you as well. Um, big companies talking to big companies of, is often about procurement processes. So think about how you can make it easier for them to buy from you as one product or one service. Yep, fantastic. Now we'll wrap it up. Three tips each on selling to big business or pitching your story. Plus a 30 second pitch about what you're doing now. Think very hard of what message you've got to um, give out to the people um, that you want to sell to. Uh, think laterally, just think differently and then engage a specialist to help you get your message out and get so you've got the key to the media doors. When I was at the age, I was an overseas correspondent, I was a political, I did many different types of reporting, but my favourite was human interest writing. Finding out about people, talking to people and writing what we used to call colour stories. And now, I guess I'll be retiring in 10 years' time, but my last bit of journalism in life, I've devoted to something I put on your seats, which is uh, My Life, My Story, which is basically a legacy for people to leave to the generations yet to come. What I do is interview people on camera. I'm off camera the whole time. And it's a little bit of a cross between Denton, Parkinson, and 7-Up. And it's a 90-minute documentary with someone telling their life story it's put together. It's a very classy, elegant product. 
That's the last one we did. That guy was an ex-boxer, but he wanted to leave his whole life story where he was born to his children. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. Just that's thought you'd like true. to know. <laughs> Thanks, John. Bridget, three tips. Be yourself. When you're in small business, often your business brand and your brand are pretty much one and the same. So don't try and be something that you're not because the big companies will see through it very, very quickly. Be sincere. If you say you're going to do something, do it and do it gratefully and with grace and with reciprocity. So give before you receive, particularly with larger businesses. And the third one, be open. Melbourne's a small town and people change jobs frequently. So the person you know today might not be the person who makes a decision in the business there, but they might take another job in a couple of years' time. So don't burn bridges, hold on to the relationships and treasure them. They're the most important things you can do, particularly with bigger business. Um, I have one client that has followed. They're one of my best and favouritest clients. And I have followed the business development manager as one of his, I suppose, preferred suppliers through three design businesses. Fantastic. Thank you. Three tips. Three tips. Um, my, fir my first tip is probably a bit more of a caution, um, and, and that is you've got to know what, you gotta know what you want in your business. And a big customer is not necessarily a good customer. There are lots of downsides about doing a lot of business with big business, especially if you're a small business like mine. You know, they can tie up a lot of your time um, and energy. They don't necessarily offer the best, um, the best and most interesting and most, most valuable work. So think about if that's really what you want. Um, the, in terms of consulting, it can be quite crowded. Um, trying to get into the corporate market, I've found that um, most of my customers, I have a couple of big corporates, but um, they're the ones that only come around, you know, every couple of years because they've got something huge on. Um, a more lucrative market may be the large end of the mid-size um, scale where you'll find that there's less competition and more need for what you do. The second tip is don't go to them. Let them come to you. Make yourself the go-to person in your field have people come to you and make it easy for people to find you and yep. know what it is that you do. And the final tip is that in all of this, it is important to be able to give of yourself and to do that with integrity. So as Bridget was saying, you know, give, give something of yourself. Remember that you are dealing with people. Companies don't buy things. People do. You are only dealing with people, so don't be scared. You know, you're just, you're just a it person who's got something to offer, audience. dealing with a person who needs it. So never be overwhelmed by the fact that you're dealing with a big company. Fantastic. And they can pick up your book as well? Yep, yep, Straight yep. Test. I've got copies yep. of my book here. If you need to write proposals or tender responses in your business, come and see me because I've got copies here you can take one home with you tonight. Yep. And they can also the contact you, Bridget, for any questions? Oh, more than happy to... Um, take calls or emails or whatever and yeah I'm happy. Fantastic. <laughs> Big round of applause, applause for our panellists please. <laughs> there you go. Good old Hague's chocolates. Yeah. And I think Robin you've had these before no, so not here's the your same second one. one. <laughs> Can't be the same one. How was that? Was that useful? Beautiful. Um, I hope you took a lot of notes. We did actually film tonight's presentation. It will be streamed on the website so you can watch it.